This is Never Alone. It's a game uh, based on traditional uh, Inuit, I think. Traditional Inuit uh, uh, folk tales. I'm just going to uh, turn the volume of the sounds down a bit. Confirm. So video settings on full screen. On, on. Well, that's um, that's a little touchy. All right. Let's just check the settings out. Facing off. Lots of stuff on. Shadows and soft. There we go. So, uh, yes, I have a NVIDIA 760, so I don't expect to be the uh, top of many games. Let's just have a look at this cultural insights. So this is, uh, this is interesting because it's been made with the corporation of the community. They've contributed their, their voices and stories to the game, and the game is based on a traditional story in their culture, as I understand it. Let's just watch this and see what happens. One of the things I think a lot of people need to understand is we aren't a museum piece. The Nupiaq people are a living people and a living culture. Even though we're in northern Alaska, which covers this vast area from Nome all the way over the Canadian border, is that there is this extreme value of interconnectedness and interdependence. It's a hunting society, a gathering society, from thousands of years. This is what creates our culture. That special relationship between humans and the natural world and the animals, and that it teaches you how to have a, a society that doesn't do too much harm to the world. Love and respect for nature, for one another, for our elders, very, very fundamental value, key to, key to life. Our values are something that bind us all. The importance of sharing with one another, the importance of spirituality, and the connection to the land, our traditions, how we hunt, sharing of stories and songs and dances. I'm Inipak. I'm from the Arctic Ocean. It's very important to me. It's, it's who I am as a person. And we're very proud of who we are, and we want to continue that. There you go. Inipiak, was that? I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I was obviously completely wrong about uh, what the community was. The controls are massively sensitive. Massively sensitive. Uh, I'm assuming we unlock those as we play through the game. Now, I've sort of dwelled a bit on all of this, this stuff uh, without getting into the game because I think all of this, this sort of cultural background to game is actually quite interesting in this case. Uh, as, you know, other media, it's quite normal to have, you know, documentary films, it's quite normal to have, have uh, non-fiction books. Games, uh, you know, leaving aside the whole games as art malarkey, Alright, I'm going to talk over him since I don't understand what he's saying anyway and you can read the subtitles if you want. But like I said, leaving aside the whole uh, games as art uh, debate there's no reason, I think, why games shouldn't address 
serious topics. It will be based on, on real world stuff. Uh, you know, in the same way that that the films can be based on a true story and all that sort of thing. And I think it's it's interesting that we've got this sort of game. <laughs> steeped in this um, you know, fairly remote culture. And, you know, by all accounts, it's also a game that's worth playing. We'll get that in a bit. It's a, a puzzle platformer. But I just wanted to explain why I'm interested in, in all this other stuff around the game. You know, the sort of... Uh, the, the cultural, cultural history in game format. I find this whole thing quite interesting. So... Watch Insights 2 new. I presume now we're going to get to some game. I'm going to beat the night. I'm glad it's in the subtitles. Oh, there we go. Ah, so is this actual gameplay right now? That is quite. Uh, Quite nice, uh, quite nice graphics, I would say. Oh. Let's run. I assume there's going to be some jumping. Slide. Oh, we're being followed by a spirit animal. Is that a spirit animal? A fox? I'm just jumping when I hit the edges. All that jumping didn't do us any good. Playing car. All right. So, one of the things I do know about the game is you can play co-op or you can play single player. So, if you had a second controller at this point, they could take control of Fox, which I assume is what just jumped over. I'm in single player mode. Okay. So that showed him. Maybe I should have jumped that though. Let's try that again. Dum 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 dum. Oh, it's not seeing. Yes, I can. I just didn't press the button, obviously. Alright, so it does control, uh, control each other, alright. I don't need to do anything. Oh, I'll get an achievement for completing the tutorial. And uh, are we going to get another, another video now? Or have we just unlocked it? I don't know. Ah, playful. Colour ring I chop in you wouldn't tell you on the other one if you go. Tell you on the other one, I'll let you in me chop. So I could watch uh, some background information about Arctic Foxes at this point. I'm not going to. I'm sure you've probably seen enough videos. Tap A to wall climb Fox. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. Ah. So we will get co-op puzzles. We're still clearly in the tutorial mode. Ah, cold wind. So it's, you know, it is quite, yeah, even though it is, it is mostly just snow, it's still quite striking visually. Oh, I probably should have pressed the button there. I'll be to brace against the wind, right? I'm glad I'm recording this so I can remember what's going on afterwards. Oopsie. I was watching the owl. What can I say? Okay. You be actually a roll, come here singer. So I love Luna Dam, not the regard near. She won't ship canoe. You be actually a roll, canoe to pick Paganak Tilang at the Matqua. Yeah. No, that's not what I'm supposed to do. Let's try that again. Okay. So wait, just wait. I don't need to do anything, I just wait until I get into position. has a soul. So you can see there will be uh, combinations of puzzles based on running and jumping and... okay. L and A to jump from the wall as fox. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, I see. Interesting. Now do I walk like that? Yes. Okay, I see. Oh, so I can see that now. Oh, I see. 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 So I imagine there's going to be wind on these things at some point. See? Anticipation, that is. So it still does knock you back. So you obviously have to gain some amount of distance onto the thing before the wind comes. Sneaky. <laughs> now what can I do? No, that was clearly not it. So I'm still working it out. Oh, there we go. Oh, 
Alright. Can we get you on here? Yes. There we go. It's like we're solving puzzles and stuff. Oh, and I've got reactions. Reactions. Oh, this looks dangerous. Oops, that was a mistake. So it is a bit slow paced. You have to wait for these things. But like I said, it is it is quite striking visually. The puzzles seem to be coming along okay. appear to have reached a, uh, a critical juncture in the plot. Something's been burnt. And yeah, so you've seen the game. I've talked a little about the, about the uh, you know, why, why I think it's important this sort of game exists and the game itself seems quite uh, Quite a pleasant little puzzle platformer with a, with a very interesting art style. So that's Never Alone, released for Linux today um, in the Steam Winter Sale. So check it out. <laughs>